Game Shot Radio is property of Game Shot, a company of Red Planet LLC. All rights reserved. Executive producer, Andy Hodges. For live broadcast booking information, syndication, or advertising, email info at gameshot.com. All comments expressed on the show are not necessarily those of Game Shot, Red Planet LLC, its advertisers, guests, or syndication affiliates. All music is licensed by ASCAP and BMI. Recordings of this broadcast prohibited without prior written consent. Welcome back to Game Shout Radio. This is Online with Game Shout. We're your host, Captain Maverick, and over there is Sexy Josh. Josh. What's up, everybody? <laughs> oh, man, you look so wore out. What, 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 I mean, what would you do this weekend that wore you out so much? I mean, you look like you're just completely wiped. Oh, man, I had the pleasure of actually heading down to uh, Orlando, Florida this weekend uh, and actually checking out MLG Orlando, uh, the Halo 2 and Super Smash Bros. Uh, tournaments that were going on there, um, and just, wow, it was it was, you know, c just crazy. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was a great time to see a lot of this competition, and you know, to see these these great players just uh, going going toe to toe with each other. It was just an amazing time. Well, it's cool, uh, as I understand, you got some uh, some videotape that you're in the process of editing to uh, get up on the site. Uh, some interviews that. Uh... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got I got a chance to actually talk with. The uh, the uh, winners of uh, this this year's MLG Orlando uh, Carbon, as well as the uh, I think second place uh, final boss, um, which was their great teams, really really cool guys, really nice to talk to. So definitely, yeah, it's going to be up on our site uh, hopefully this Friday. Well, you know that's a strange coincidence because well, we just happen to have on the phone with us, yeah, as is our want, uh, Mike Sepso. He is the CEO of MLG, and Mike, I want to welcome you to Game Shout Radio. Glad to have you, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, Mike, first of all, tell us just a little bit about MLG, Major League Gaming, and where where did it start? How did you get involved? Um, we started about three and a half years ago. Uh, we're New York City people, so um, we started here, and we, you know, the whole idea was essentially how do you take all the cool stuff that was happening mostly on the uh, PC gaming side and turn it into a big mainstream real sport. Um, and being kind of gamers who are also media people, we thought we'd try to put together, you know, the serious gaming community that was just starting to form on the console side with um, kind of more established traditional sports people and see what we could build. And here we are. So we're um, a little past halfway through our our third full national pro circuit. Um, you know, we have just a tremendous amount of momentum. Uh, we're the, the first, you know, kind of new gaming sport to really get out there in a very mainstream way with a, a big network TV deal and, um, you know, a lot of different internet properties. And we're really kind of taking these top pros uh, that Josh got to see this weekend out into a big mainstream spotlight. And we're really excited about it. So basically, Major League Gaming is turning in uh, turning video gaming into a competitive sport and yeah, making I, a more professional type atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know if you look at kind of any sport, which is what we did at the very beginning, its development, whether it's a traditional stick and ball sport or uh, something a little more modern and, and different, like NASCAR racing or uh, action sports. They tend to follow a really similar path, and uh, competitive gaming certainly follows the same path. You know, it starts out with a bunch of people who are just really into it, um, and then a few kind of organizations start up to, to organize and create a platform for them to compete in, and then it starts to build into a bigger media snowball, and at some point it becomes kind of a, a mainstream activity. And that's how we tracked our progress as MLG. I mean, we certainly didn't invent competitive gaming. We came in and, and kind of created the premier platform for the best gamers to play under. Um, you know, I think the other thing that's different about us from a lot of the competitive gaming world is we we stayed away from the PC world, um, the PC gaming world, just for a couple of reasons. The primary one, primarily because it's a much more niche kind of activity in console gaming, uh, now it's, it's capability for all three platforms to, to play online. It's just a, a powerhouse mainstream activity. You know, just like 
every kid's got a, uh, you know, every kid in America basically has a basketball or a baseball. Everybody's got an Xbox or a PlayStation or a GameCube. So um, we're kind of leveraging that wide audience and, and this huge activity and taking the best of the best and giving them a, a serious professional sports-oriented platform for them to compete in. That's excellent. But are, are you uh, adding more PC gaming now? I mean, is that becoming part of the, uh, or, is, or is the equation still strictly console? No, it's still strictly console. I mean, we're, um, you know, we're, we, we certainly have a great deal of respect and a lot of interest in the PC gaming world. Um, although I think that that, uh, you know, it'll probably be something that if we get involved in, will be primarily online um, and not necessarily in the kind of at the forefront of the, the mainstream pro circuit, uh, which is going to will probably forever be console until the thing that happens after console, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Complete entertainment systems. Yeah, some yeah. kind of, you know, Tron world or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you know, comparing the sports to, uh, you know, to the gaming, um, do you, do you think that there's, a, you know, that this definitely opens up to more people to be able to get into this than, you know, say, you know, you don't make a team in football, but, you know, does this, do you think this opens up to more possibilities and players um, to be able to compete professionally than they would, in, uh, you know, in something else? Yeah, I think it's, it's certainly more accessible, right? Um, because you can, you can literally get involved from home. I mean, you can go to the MLGPro.com site and get involved with the community. Um, we've run a lot of online kind of feeder tournaments before and we're about to do that in a very big way um, toward the end of September. Um, so we're really trying to allow anybody who has, the, you know, who has essentially a broadband connection and a console at home to get involved with MLG as a sport. Um, you know, the progression of that to become a pro and then, an, you know, really an elite pro is kind of like saying, you know, most kids in America have are, uh, have a basketball accessible to them and a hoop somewhere to play on, whether it's on their garage in the driveway or at school. But going down the road to becoming Michael Jordan is a very, you know, it's a very different thing. And I think that that's the same model. I mean, we, we really have a lot of very traditional sports people involved with building this league. Um, you know, and it's become, it's, it's, you the, the guys who are from traditional sports recognize what's happening very quickly and they get very excited about it. Just as a, as a story, in Orlando this weekend, um, I had the opportunity to sit and watch one of the big matches, actually the, um, the match where Team Carbon finally beat um, Final Boss, who since last year's championship has been undefeated. They've never dropped a game and they actually lost um, and were sent down to the concession bracket. And I watched that game with Otis Smith, who's a former professional NBA player and currently the GM of the Orlando Magic. And just watching him, like, see the, the excitement and the crowd, you know, these guys who obviously take this incredibly seriously and practice very hard and who are the best of the best at what they do, really battle it out. I mean, he, he immediately saw this is, a, this is a very early but very strong pro sport, and it's got a lot of momentum behind it, and he was just psyched. It was really cool. Well, it does. It yeah, I, the, I, uh, everyday gamer to be able to get involved. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Josh. I was gonna say I, I have to agree. I, watching that that final uh, that final game between Final Boss and and Carbon, uh, or any of the games for that matter. Just the you know every time there was a, a, a kill tackler or you know somebody pulled off a great a great move or um, you know it was oddball and somebody got you know got uh, me lead with a skull. The crowd was just, you know, ecstatic. They were, they were up in, up in the air, cheering and screaming. It was, it was a really amazing thing to see. It's not, you know, anybody out there who, whoever gets a chance, of, you know, to go to an MLG competition, you, I, I highly suggest it, because um, it's like it's one of the coolest things to see. Yeah, I think the other side, and this is sort of on the same topic of getting every regular gamer involved in MLG and what we're doing. You know, the, we have seven Pro Circuit events this season. Each one of them is a one-hour episode on USA starting in November. And, um, you know, one of the things is, as Josh can tell you, you know, the, the crowd, there's a few hundred people watching these matches in the in the main arena on the main stage. That whole thing is being taped for television. Um, 
the difference between that crowd and, and people watching TV at home, obviously, is those guys are, you know, big Halo players, big Smash Brothers players, so they know what's going on. What we've done to kind of communicate what we do as a sport to a more mainstream audience, even a non-gaming audience, um, is really kind of translated what happens in our competitions into a, a regular, you know, sports-type atmosphere and done a lot of educating. So when you see, for instance, you know, a great Halo 2 game, you'll see it with, with regular sports play-by-play -play commentary, with uh, color commentary, with a really sophisticated graphics package that wraps around the screen that will explain sort of what's going on on the whole map at the time, how the teams are executing different strategies, who's doing well, you know, who's dead and respawning and where they're respawning and, and what's happening. So I think that we'll be able to take the next step with the TV series on USA. So, <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell me about the, uh, the TV deal. Sure. So... Um, early on, we recognized that in order to bring MLG and these great pro players out there to a big mainstream audience, we're going to need to do a TV deal just like any other professional sport. Makes sense. Um, and we were lucky enough to be able to link up with the, the guy out there who's the best at this, at the sort of TV world um, and the melding of sports and television, a guy named Neil Pilsen, who was the president of CBS Sports for uh, over 10 years, for a long time, and really oversaw the classic development of sport on television to where we have it today. He does all of the TV deals for everything from NASCAR to the Olympics to World Series of Poker, so uh, he's the best of the best out there. And he worked with us on this, and we went to see all the usual suspects in the TV world, and um, we originally went to the, to the NBC sports people, which are it's essentially NBC and USA are, are linked, and their sports divisions work together on to everything from the Olympics to the US Open, which they're broadcasting now. Um, and we just felt really at home there, and, and they understood our vision, and they didn't want to be intrusive at all. They wanted us to just go do our thing, um, and they helped us in putting together a, a really unbelievable team of television production people from the, the traditional sports world. So our executive producer, Rob Dustin, is a guy who's produced uh, four Olympics. He's won three Emmys for sports production. He's just a, a monster in that world. And bringing those guys together with our, you know, with our league operations officials and, and really hardcore pro gamers has just been a really very interesting and educational experience for everybody. And I think we're coming out of this with an unbelievably uh, entertaining and really cool product that is going to be um, incredibly exciting, obviously, for all of us in the competitive gaming world who have waited so long for this to happen. But also, I think it's going to reach a huge audience of people who aren't even necessarily gamers. Well, it's also going to reach a huge audience of gamers, and I'm telling you, this is a yeah, this absolutely. Is a long I mean, time I, you coming. know, I, how cool is it going to be? To, I mean, we all know it's very cool that these top pros like Walshi and T Squared and these guys are making tons of money and they're yeah. unbelievable at this game. But the fact that they're now going to be—I mean, this is a this is seven episodes on the highest-rated cable network in the world, and we're following uh, WWE, which is the biggest. Uh, draws the biggest audience on cable television. So, yep. you know, we're going to be, a lot of people who haven't experienced this before are going to see it, but hopefully also, you know, every serious gamer in the world is going to tune in at Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on USA on November 11th and watch this go down. That's November 11th, now, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Got it. <laughs> now here's my question. Do you, do you, do you think that an hour is going to be enough? I mean, you know, just being there, the amount of what good goes on, um, you know, it almost seems like you're going to need more than an hour. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. But, I mean, the cool thing is, look, you you know, TV is TV. We can't NASCAR race. It gets tiring after a little while in the TV format, right? Um, it, when you get into longer form programming like that, you need it to be a little bit more interactive so that you as a viewer can pick and choose what you're watching at any given time. And we've been delivering that through our website at MLGPro.com for a number of years already. So you can sit at home now and watch a live broadcast you know, a full two-and-a-half-day broadcast of what happens at every Pro Circuit event. Um, you can also then go back, you know, days later and, and look at every major match that happened at that competition. It's all available in our archive. So, and then there's, of course, you know, hours of interviews and pre- and post-game wrap-ups and all that kind of great stuff that you get in any sport. It's all available for you online. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and as you guys know, I mean, we're on a... We're on a radio show that's going to be heard, you know, by people downloading mostly over the internet. 
that's the wave of the future. That's how people like us consume most of our media. We want to go out and get it in the format we want when we want it. And we're really leveraging that. So you see, I talked earlier about uh, we're doing this relaunch of our website and having a lot more online tournaments and that kind of stuff. There's also just a huge video component that's being delivered through the new web website that'll be out there the second half of September. So, I, I mean, we've already got, I, I, I didn't get a chance, Josh, to show you the kind of backstage environment of what goes on at an MLG Pro Circuit event, but there's literally hundreds of hours of gaming footage captured uh, in video along with, I don't know, eight high definition cameras that are rolling, plus a lot of other video cameras that are set up for the internet broadcast. It's it's a pretty amazing amount of digital media that we have that comes out of each one of these pro circuits events, and we do our best to make sure all of it's available. What doesn't make it into the TV show, you'll actually be able to see online. Um, and one of the cool things, too, is because we actually own and produce the show ourselves um, and distribute it through USA, we also have the capability to distribute it in other places. So we'll be making some announcements over the next few weeks about all the other places that you'll be able to see that, that programming, too. That's outstanding. Yeah, I, I definitely would love to see what you guys do. Uh, I'll be in uh, MLG New York, uh, hopefully, so I'd love to definitely check out the behind the scenes, which actually brings me to, to another question. Um, <clears throat> is, I mean, are, are you going to be offering this on the new Xbox Live Marketplace for download to view? Because um, that, that seems like a perfect venue uh, you know, for gamers to, to get to see a lot of this. Yeah, good point. Yeah, um, you know we we've been working pretty closely with Microsoft. Microsoft, obviously, I don't think we've I don't think we've officially announced anything yet, but um, we're certainly looking at, at marketplace as a great way to um, provide not just you know the regular programming that you'll be able to see on USA, but also all the other cool stuff that's happening. I mean, for each one of these one hours, we're going to cram as much gaming time as we can into it, obviously, but it's also the first time people are going to get a look at these guys like like Walsh, like T squared, uh, you know, like Karma, and see what their regular lives are like. I mean, some of these guys on Team Carbon are basically came out of nowhere um, on the circuit last year and just started to really pull it together and crush everybody. They're all still in high school, you know. I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty amazing what their lives are like as well. So. That kind of stuff will be available on the TV show on, on different places. Um, hopefully a lot of it will be available on Marketplace for sure. That would be a great thing. That would be a great thing. So where do you see the Major League Gaming Organization going in the future? Well, it's interesting. I mean, we you know when we started MLG, it was really, um, we looked at it and said, all right, how do we build the next NASCAR? How do we build something that... Most people think is a, is something that appeals to only a very small number of people um, who are really passionate about it, and that the world at large doesn't really care. How do we take something like that and turn it into a success like a NASCAR, where now it's the largest spectator sport in the world, and you know they have the biggest TV deals, and it's just beating out all the traditional sports? How do you take a, a competitive gaming and turn it into something like that? So. You know, that's been our outlook all the time, and it's funny, I always get asked in interviews about how, how I think MLG compares to other um, gaming leagues or tournament series or promotional tournaments, and stuff yeah. like that, that happen all around us. And honestly, we, we really don't compare ourselves to that. We compare ourselves to NASCAR and, if, uh, you know, and, and to the NFL, and if if there's a way for me to frame what our vision is for MLG, it really is MLG I see being the next NASCAR. And the way that 20 years ago we sat here and said, you know, do you think 40 cars driving around uh, in an oval for four hours would be exciting on television? Most people would say no. Um, Not unless there's a crash. Same, same thing that happened to us a couple of years ago. You know, everybody said gaming can't be a spectator sport. And, um, you know, I think we all knew better, and, and so that's where we're at is take MLG worldwide and on a, on a stage that's as big as any other professional sport is. Well, whenever I compare MLG, I agree with you. Uh, I would compare it more to uh, professional sports leagues rather than comparing it to a, uh, a, a tournament league or, or something of that nature. I mean... MLG. In fact, you guys just got a, a, a ton of backing not too long ago, uh, financial backing to, to really launch MLG, and, and you've been doing the right things with it, as I see. Yeah, thanks. And we did, um, earlier this year, we raised uh, $10 million, actually, which is right. what 
what we felt would would get us through kind of phase two. You know, if phase one was really build a, a credible sanctioning body that could be recognized worldwide and um, create the premier platform for all the best professional gamers in the world to compete in um, and really do that sort of community-driven effort to make get everybody together in the same boat and, and build something real and authentic. Um, we, you know, it was important that we did that first without much outside influence. And we, we felt that we accomplished that certainly by having two full um, pro circuits in completely independently on our own. Um, and then the, you know, the raising money just like a traditional startup company would, um, albeit, you know, it was a pretty big amount of money for a first um, outside investment. We just felt that that's, you know, we're, we're dealing in a world where there's media all over the place and new things are happening all the time and, it, and it, it, it's still, it's enough money that we're able to really control our own destiny. We don't have to sell away the rights to MLG for anything. We really invest in owning and shaping everything that we're doing. Um, you know, to the extent, like I said earlier, that we've got a huge cable network deal and, you know, these are these are the people that have been producing the Olympics for the past 20 years. They don't get in our hair about this stuff. They, they know, they trust us to do what we want to do. And we have the financial capability now to afford to be able to do that. So it's really kind of, you know, sort of all the best things are happening and, and we're really excited about it. It's all finally starting to come together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's really gelled. Um, from here on out, it's just, it's all about, you know, how big of an audience can we get to watch the best pro gamers in the world compete against each other. And we're going to do that on TV, obviously. We're going to do it in a big way online. We're also going to do it with our partner, Boost Mobile, through their, you know, their over 3 million subscribers. So they'll be able to get all different kinds of video and graphics and text and everything like that through their cell phones. So we're going to try to be everywhere uh, at every part of the day that people who are into MLG and into competitive gaming are. That's awesome. So now here's here's my question. I, I've uh, you know having been there all weekend in Orlando watching everybody play Halo Two, um, you know, walking away from this, I was really jonesing just to play some Halo Two after watching everybody. I, you know, do, do you yourself play games uh, or find yourself really wanting to jump in if you do? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I I shy away from playing during a pro circuit event because I don't want to you don't want to take that big of a confidence hit. <laughs> uh, it's difficult for me to be in a room where there's, you know, 2,000 people who are so much, so far ahead of me in, in kind of skill level. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, that's why we started this company. I mean, I, you know, I had a pretty successful career going, and I was I was happy with what I was doing, but I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, and I, it was a great opportunity for, for me to mix two things that I really love, you know, one being growing growing new interesting businesses and the other being gaming i mean i'm a i'm a really competitive person and i don't you know i'm one of those people that that uh unwraps halo 2 on the day that it comes out and i pop it in my xbox and i i never even see the campaign mode for months you know i'm right there playing somebody <laughs> sitting next to me right away and i think that um i think a lot of people in the gaming industry are taking notice that that's what people like to do with gaming it's a really social competitive aspect of their lives and that's what we've been trying to leverage. I think that's what you got. You know, you see all these people competing and playing against each other, and you want to go take on some people and play. Um, and it's yeah. I mean, I we we get to play in the office every once in a while. Unfortunately, I I get my butt handed to me by most of our staff, but I still play. <laughs> well, <both> games. <laughs> um, I'm a I'm a big first person shooter. All right. I, I play a little sports games, a little racing every once in a while, but. Um, you know, I'm really, I'm really, a, I'm really a shooter guy. Hey, us FS uh, or FPS has got to stick together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, man. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I no. play. You know, I probably play more Halo than any Halo One and Two still actually than any than any other game. But certainly, anytime there's a new uh, Ghost Recon or a Tom Clancy out, I'm on that too. Very cool. Now with uh, Halo 3 uh, somewhere around the corner, um, <laughs> uh, is, are you guys planning to incorporate that one and in, in dropping Halo 2 or keep playing Halo 2? 
uh, and incorporate both, or you know, do you, have you guys even thought that far ahead um, as, as to how that's going to affect the uh, tournaments? Um, well, the good thing about what we're doing is that we are, um, you know, certainly the Xbox has been the, the platform that's been the driver for us because that's where the game's been. That's really driven the community forward. Um, but we don't we don't really go out and hand pick a game and then put it on the circuit and then tell everybody that's what they have to play. It's really the community that drives what games make it onto the pro circuit. Um, certainly, a lot of publishers see a lot of value in you know getting a game on on the MLG Pro Circuit. But the process for getting there is not just you have to make a great game. It's also that you know it has to be a game that can support a very large. Um, and passionate competitive community so we're actually you know we're, we talk pretty regularly with a lot of people in the publishing world um, what our hope is is that the publishers and developers will start to recognize um, how people play multiplayer games and what requirements are necessary for multiplayer games to be kind of for you know MLG Pro ready um, if you will, I think you you know, one of the ways that we were established as a sanctioning body worldwide is that we took both Halo 1 and Halo 2 and Smash Brothers and, and Tekken before it and, and Soul Calibur and all the games that we've had on previous pro circuits. And we really worked with the competitive communities to take the best standards and practices. And in the case of a Halo 2, for instance, what are the settings, what are the game types, what are the maps that create the most skill-oriented platform for competition. You know, most games and developers um, like to have a lot of randomness and crazy things happen to you while you're playing. For this to be a professional sport, there has to be none of that. You know, it has to be entirely skill-based. Um, and that's what our officials are, are great at. And that's why we really let the community, the competitive community, drive what, what games make it to the pro circuit. So, you know, Halo 3 is an obvious one because we've, we've run Halo 1 and Halo 2. Um, in the meantime, you know, you'll probably see a couple of new games on the 2007 Pro Circuit uh, that'll come through. Primarily, they'll come through our, our new online tournament systems that are going to be out there in September. Um, we'll see which ones, you know, which games are going to develop the biggest and the most passionate communities, and those are the ones that go through our process to make it onto the circuit. Very cool. You've done a heck of a job, Mike. Surrounded yourself with some really high-quality people and. Uh... Well, it put together a, a, an excellent program that I think is is just we're just barely seeing the tip of the iceberg. There's just so much more. I agree, and thank you, thank oh, you very much. Oh, it's believe me, it's my pleasure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank uh, Mike Sepso, the CEO of uh, MLG, the Major League Gaming Organization. We're really glad to have you on uh, on Game Shop, Mike. Always good to talk to you guys, and I look forward to seeing you in New York. Well, yeah. In fact, um, I'm going to be asking my producer to let me go to New York, too. I want to go, <laughs> and, and I'll see you when I, when I get there. In fact, you and I, we talked, uh, oh, gosh, what was it, about a year ago, just a little bit about uh, MLG and where it's going and what it's doing. And, yep. and uh, to see what you've done in a year, it's very impressive. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's outstanding. Thanks again for joining us on Game Shot Radio, Mike. You bet. Take care, guys. This is Game Shout Radio, the number one talk game station in the world. Visit GameShout.com for more info. Game Shout. Game Shout.